How do you migrate from an SAP PI PO scenario to an SAP Cloud integration? In this video, I'll show you an example of how this can be done using the VGAP tool. So first off, here we have an ICO. It starts with an HTTP. We have a receiver condition here, and we can see we have a condition that is based uh, on the invoice number. And based on that, we are routing it also to a separate partner. We do have two mappings on this one. One is a multi-mapping and one is a normal mapping, but with uh, operation parameters. And then we have a SOAP and a file outbound connection. So let's see how easy it is to handle this migration. So first off, we obviously need to migrate it into a CPI iFlow. And the way we do that is we go in here, we would select the iFlow. We have here and the right system we can select it we then select the cpi system we want to target demo migrate here that's fine we create a name for the site flow then we perform a check this will then see if we have all artifacts that's needed for this and it also tries to understand what are the communication channels and how would we map them. So we have built a mapping in accessibility that allow you to easily customize conversions of uh, PI communication channels to CPI communication blocks. And we can select, see, see the different mappings here and we can select the one we want to use in it. If you do not find one, you can also just leave it blank and it will try uh, without that. We can see it comes with some warnings that we need to check the endpoint, check the, the user exists on these different segments. And that's all okay. We press check, and this will then perform the check to see if everything is okay. We pro create the preview. Here we can see the, the iFlow we're expecting to build. And now we just click migrate, and that is all we needed to do for us to start this migration. So now we can check this iFlow that we have been creating. And here we can see the setup. And if we just go into edit mode here, uh, we needed to fix this channel out here because it needed a new URL. We can see here we have the parameter that we set up and we set it up using uh, the exchange properties. And then this is configured to a external configuration. If we look at the message mapping that exists for this, if we open it, we can see a number of different items. So it has been migrated to full message mapping with XSDs. Uh, here we just have a current date. Here we have this external parameter that have been added. And here we're simply just taking the PI message mapping and adding our own mapping logic between these two things and then we have another mapping here this is a user defined a function library that we have also migrated and here we can view this uh, script that has been migrated so the figap tool have taken the function library converted it to this one um, one of the things that this will not support is it will not support uh, functions that are using containers you would have to rewrite those um, containers as supported if you have the user-defined functions embedded into the mapping um, and then the other here we can see we have a condition here that says if the invoice number is different for one then we send it to this channel here and we can then see the the payload we create a multi-mapping payload we perform the multi-mapping we have added a splitter based on the multi-mapping and then we filter so we get the original output afterwards let's save it as a version and then we start the deployment here of this so now we have made all the changes that we need for this specific iFlow for it to really function before we get any further we need to go back to the pickup tool here we will go to the tracked object. We will select the CPI system we have. And because we made a change to it, we just need to synchronize this package again. This will mean we will get a new version 
of this specific iFlow. So we always know which artifacts, etc., we have as a part of this. Um, and to make sure it is working correctly. And this takes a little while. We can see we now have two revisions. And we have built a lot of versioning history into the tool. So once you have an iFlow, you can actually compare it in a BPMN mode and see where there are specific differences. And you can drill into some of these differences and see what have been changed between these two versions. There's also a HTML or diff to HTML that will show you uh, the code changes that have happened between these two versions. All of this makes it a lot easier for you to manage your SAP integration and you can use this comparison in a lot of different places. Good. Now we have tested it, we have seen it back in the FIAF system, now we want to create a test case. So to create a test case, we go to our PI system. Here we would select the same interface. We will select record messages. We will add it to a test read here. We will also create a expression for this so we know what it is. And because this has some split, we need an order expression here also. So now we have I can create a test case. And all we need to do is to press start. This will then go into the PI system at the either our own log modules or the SAP standard locking modules to the beginning and the end of the processing chain. And now you just need someone to send messages through this. And I just did that on a different screen. And we can now see we got two incoming messages and six outgoing messages. So that's all we need to create a test case. We simply just say create test. And we will just delete this one so we are not waiting to create more messages on this one. So now we have a test case and let me just go in here. Here we can see the payloads that we have. And if you just want to make a small modification to this, we can easily go in here. We can change the price of this item to 9911. And with this, we have made modifications to the test case. So we know this is something new we would expect. So now we have a test case that has been recorded on our PI system and we want to migrate it to a CPI test case. So what we do is we go here, we take the message, we click migrate to CPI iFlow. We can add it to our existing test case. We can select the iFlow that we have in charge here. And the easiest is just to search by starting. And we click select and here we can see it figures out that this uh, IDOC interface is mapped to this iFlow and this I, uh, line item is mapped to this uh, message ID now so we just select here we want to update this and now we have actually created a new test case to run on our CPI iFlow so we will just remove the, the link to this one the PI test case, and now we only have the CPI test case. We can then select run, and we just need to uh, get license for this. And it's just about creating licenses for the objects that you need for handling this. So now we have actually created a test case, and we can actually run it. And to run it, it will switch the iPhone to trace mode, it will then start processing messages on it and once it's received the output it will then see if everything works out successfully so let me just check and see if this is started we can just see here if we have processed any messages there's actually some messages that has been processed on it which is good so we can check our result so we got some errors let's see if they are what we expected to do um so we got some errors here and errors here is differences between the payload that we sent and the payload we received. So we can see here that this date is different and we say, okay, this is okay. We accept that difference. And we can also see we've got some problems down here. We can look at these differences. We can see there's one of these up here and there's other the, the price that we changed. 
And if we look at this line item price, I would assume this would also be the line item price would change. So first off, we just want to press this uh, process full comparison. This will then check all the, the, the messages we had, and then it will find out that the first one is okay and what we can actually do now is we can select press here update and users test case that means that now we have actually accepted we want the price of 9911 uh, as our expected outcome so all of this makes it a lot easier for you to manage and create and run test cases if we ran it again we would see that this would uh, result in a success message so now we have done our modifications. We have migrated the airflow. We have tested it. Next up is we want to transport it into our productive system. And the way we do that is we go to track objects. Here we find our system again. We find our airflow. We say assign to ticket. We create a ticket that describes what are the airflow, what are we supposed to be doing here, and this is a part of the tool that you'd also be able to use once you're done with the migration to handle transports uh, of your iFlow. We select which landscapes we want this to be in. We specify the Jira number. We can put in the link to, to Jira about what's going on here. So now we have our iFlow. We could attach all the objects that we needed from this one, um, but now it's fine. We look up the, the relative test cases here and we can see we got this iFlow here uh, the test case we already created we can select we want to run this and then this would run this test case and we would expect this to be giving us all green because the messages returning here is is all green and this will take a little while for it to process um, so in the meantime we will start the transport and to process the transport you simply start press start transport now we have an option here to define all the parameters across the landscapes what are they supposed to be like um so we can change the modification here say this is xml the parameters here is demo and we also have global search replace after uh, server names um, so you can globally define that the S4 development is mapped to this uh, parameter in production so now as a developer I'm done I will say I will send this to approval and now the approver would then be able to do these things obviously in a real scenario I would not be able to approve my own code but to make it easier to do this demo I can now approve also my own code. When I'm doing this as an approver, I have the option here to do all, look at the, the differences that the user have made. And I would also, if there's new artifacts, I would still have the option to use all of these different uh, comparison options to show what is wrong or what is different and thereby giving me a lot better details about what's actually being changed inside of the transport. I can approve it always give them some good advice about this or link it to whatever artifacts you need and then it's simply about importing and the import would then import the artifact configure it and then deploy it and you can obviously define whether or not you want to deploy it or not or you want to deploy it at a different point in time so and this will take a few few seconds uh, for us to fully import this. So now we have configured everything. If there are some problems, we obviously have rollback here that will go back to the latest version. We can then go back to our ticket. We can see our test case ran successfully. And now we should actually also have an option to run it on our uh, QA system if we wanted to do that. We will set our ticket to resolve and now we can actually go here we can create a report about everything that we have made of this and this transport is obviously good for the migration but also after you have done the migration here you have the description 
you have all the artifacts that has been changed as a part of this. You have the test cases, how the test case ran, which problems it ran into, if there were any. Um, and here we can see the transport and we can see who approved it and imported it. So all in all, this Excel report makes it a lot easier for you to document the change it, upload it into the Jira system to show that what has been done, who approved uh, these changes. And all in all, this makes the process a lot easier for you to manage, uh, making it easier for you to transport. And as you saw here, it's like a 15 minutes to both do a migration, to create test cases and move it into production. Obviously in a real life scenario, you would be spending more time on some of the different steps as a part of this, but you see, it does help you create all the different artifacts and have some advantages to running the migrations. So I hope you want to see more, uh, go to figup.com and check out our migration tool or our DevOps tool. Thanks for watching.